diamonds card. So also the eight of diamonds is about being really like successful with your skills, right? So the king of diamonds card is really about being able to make the sacrifices necessary in order to become successful. Mm -hmm. So this can be financial sacrifices. This can be time sacrifices. It's mostly a sacrifice of a skill of some kind. So since I started my king of diamonds, I have been, I haven't been able to make music at all. Oh. I love making music. Making music makes me happier than most things in life. But in order to keep my business going, in order to provide for myself, in order to just, you know, live my life the way that I need to, I have had to completely cut out music. I had my whole living room as a recording studio of equipment that I've gathered over the years. I had to clear it all out to make way for my filming studio, for my videos. Oh, okay. And I've had to invest a lot of what I've earned from my business back into my business. So I've made a big, huge financial sacrifice to be able to do what I do. You know, so paying for classes, paying for equipment, paying for computers and things like this. So those sacrifices are very real. Um, and that's the energy that I'm in now. So it's the energy of sacrifice. It's also the energy of financial power. So hopefully during the seven years, I also do gain some kind of success financially. So that's what the King of Diamonds could mean. But the results of that are really dependent upon every single card in my spread. Oh, okay. And how the planets interact inside of it. So for Kian Rao, he's a person that can juggle a lot of different ideas. That's the Ten of Clubs. He's a person okay. that can come to a full understanding of something, um, a full and complete understanding of something. He's an intellectual. He's someone of intelligence. The Ten of Clubs is highly intelligent. It's the magician card. So some people with Ten of Clubs are like literally like these magician people. They can do so much. And it's amazing what they can do because they make it look so easy, you know? Oh. So now he's a Ten of Diamonds. So a Ten of Diamonds person, they have so many skills. And what the Ten of Diamonds needs to do is figure out which skill, when, or which skill to use when. Okay. Right? It's also the Wheel of Fortune card. So he might find during the seven-year period of his life that life kind of decides things for him. Oh. Right? It's also a great card for finances. So finances could be going really well for him. But the key to him figuring out his finances is his ecliptic card, which is the path that you're walking on. And for him, that's figuring out which skill to use when. Okay. Does this make sense? Yes. It perfectly makes sense. <laughs> so usually when I look at a card spread, what I'm looking at is who the person is, which is the birth card, and the path that they're walking on, which is their ecliptic card. So he has a difficult path. We just talked about the seven of hearts. Do you remember what the seven of hearts means? Yeah, and in this, uh, for example, I'm asking in this chart, I mean, Ken Rao's chart, that for example, he... Uh, he, he doesn't take uh, money for the consultations also and uh, he's not even married also so mm -hmm. those things how do you see i mean I, i'm just or anything else <laughs> where do i see like the charitable side of him yeah or not getting married staying as a uh, like a celibate or anything i mean something specific because the, these two are the, at least the not getting married aspect that's a big part of his life well, let's talk about the not getting married aspect because that's a lot easier to see. So remember how I was just talking about the seven of hearts? Uh-huh. <laughs> that's his path he's walking on. So okay. you tell me, what did I say the seven of hearts meant? Yeah, it is uh, more of that which will happen to you. That, I mean, life will throw more things on him. That's what is it, I guess. Well, the Seven of Hearts card represents separation in love. It represents restriction in love, boundaries in love, or That's emotional card. relationships. It also represents long-distance relationships. Um, the need, I always have been calling the Nine of Hearts the unconditional love card, but I believe the Seven of Hearts is also this card of unconditional love and you don't need to unconditionally love someone that's loving you back. It's easy to love someone that's loving you back Unconditional love is typically necessary when you're not getting what you want from an individual. You're in love with someone and they won't text you back. You're in love with someone and they don't want anything to do with you. So his seven of hearts card 
is a huge part of his, it, it is his path. And this means that a lot of 10 of clubs people, they'll experience a loss of love. They'll experience um, separation from love. They might experience breakups. They might experience um, difficulties in love. And the reason why he might choose to really not participate in love is because he has a very strong king of spades card on his moon card. And the moon card is what represents our emotional self and where we feel most comfortable. And the yeah, king of yeah. spades is a yogi card. And it's also Ooh. a card of being a hermit. So for him, he might feel most comfortable being a hermit, right? Okay, Because if this seven, that thing which you said, seven, so that can be there for anybody, but they can have like going through 10 different relationships, now getting kicks everywhere so because of this moon card that he's abstaining from that that's beautiful yeah and we have to like kind of go deeper with it and look at all the other involvements with it as well and one thing i wanted to ask this uh, seven number which you said that will be there for everybody in some place or how is it like i don't necessarily know exactly but i don't believe there will always be a seven card in your birth card spread i don't think it's possible for that to be but when you have a number seven card on your ecliptic card that means that your path in life is more challenging oh okay. and that doesn't necessarily mean bad like people think oh challenging that's bad i have a seven on my ecliptic card and mine is a seven of diamonds and that just means that i've had to struggle a lot financially and struggle a lot with validation. So basically anytime when I was growing up I, and I said, oh, I want to become a singer or I want to become a writer or whatever it is I wanted to do, it didn't matter what I said. Uh -huh. Everyone in my life would say, that's stupid. Why would you do that? Or you're going to fail at that. You know, like you suck. Why would you ever do that? So even as an adult, no matter what I do, I get people that are going to be like, you suck, you're the worst. And that's just the path that I'm on. So I've just gotten used to it and now I don't care. Like okay, I'll wear so a top hat. Seven, seven uh, is related to the struggles, as you said. Yes. And, uh, depending on what seven it is, then because I, I have zero idea on cards, I don't even know what this sign <laughs> symbols are. I'm just saying. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Seven, I have no idea. So that's what I was assuming. The seven is only one card, but now you said that it can be many cards. So I got it now. Yes. Yeah, so it's funny because I bet there are so many people that are watching that have the same questions as you. So it's really, really good you're asking. But so there are numbers zero through 10 plus mm -hmm. Jack, Queen and King. So like a regular playing card deck. And then there is the hearts, spades, clubs and diamond suits. And basically diamonds relate to our material well-being um, and our values. Clubs relate to our ideas, our inspirations and our friendships. Hearts relate to our emotional lives and um, any kind of like nurturing situations in our life. And then spades relate to hard work as well as our psychological and spiritual development. Uh -huh, okay. So then you apply these numbers of the cards to these suits and then you can really pull a lot of different meanings from that. So that's how we can understand what it means by, um, you know, yeah. now being a 10 of diamonds right now. Okay, so and uh, I don't know, I cannot, I don't know how to annotate this, but in the first, uh, in the upper leftmost uh, square, yeah, so there, there's the topmost card is that 10 is written there. Mm -hmm. And then in the down, uh, in that below square, there is the different card in that same place, in the square below. Right here. No, 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 in that below it down the seven year progression yes yeah yeah yes yes there yes that brown card is different yes so yes. this is the birth card the ten of clubs yeah. and this is the this progressed is the progress. birth card now we can zoom in even further from seven years and we can get a one year progression so this means that for all of age 86 okay he's mostly going to feel the energy. This is a kind of tricky card to explain, but it's like, he's mostly going to feel the energy of the seven of spades. He's not a progressed seven of spades. He's mostly a progressed eight of ace of diamonds. Okay. Um, so, actually, that's not how I want to describe it during this whole seven year period. He's a progressed 10 of diamonds. It's just that the ace of diamonds and the seven of spades are going to be prevalent energies. 
So your progress mm -hmm. card doesn't necessarily change from year to year. This is what I found at least. Um, Ernst could teach it completely differently, but in practice I found that during these seven years, you are this progressed card the whole seven years. Oh. And then your energy for that 86 years, this is like an extra progressed card. Okay. This ace of diamonds. And then this is more so like the seven of spades is more so like an energy that you feel. Okay. So my one question is, suppose in the birth chart, as you said that in his case, the moon has that influence of that card, which shows that he wants to stay alone or something for example over the moon which card is there but suppose in the uh, this current progression card there's a uh, something over the moon which says he totally wants to marry or be social so then how do you see that that's a that's a really wonderful question and basically Yes, you can definitely have these these times in his chart where it's like, wow, he could meet someone and be in love or whatever. But you always want to apply this against the natal promise or the okay. birth card promise. So if his card spread is saying, no, he'll never get married, oh. and then an opportunity for marriage comes, he won't get married. He might meet someone, but not ever realize that it's the same as astrology if a transit comes oh, for childbirth yeah. and the person's chart denies children well they're not going to get a child but something could happen regarding children and also oh. i wanted to point out to you another thing that could be negating marriage on some level for him let me just double check this for a second here charakarka um k2 is with his venus and his mercury which is his darakarka do you see that k2 is here oh. Venus and Mercury. So that's like kind of one of those things where it's like his karma might be somewhat, you know, resolved with that. Or oh. it's also with his seventh cusp there. The seventh cusp is with the 12th cusp. Do you see? It's oh. like, okay. these are things where you can kind of match th those two together. Mm. And then with that seven of hearts path, uh -huh. it's more challenging. Okay. So, I want to show you quickly so you really understand how this matches with astrology. And I want to show you that, see this 10 of spades card, how it has so many planets in it. Yeah. So before you go to that, one last question I have to ask in this regard. So suppose, for example, you don't know who this person is. Suppose, yeah. And then this person comes to you and then you see these things, as you said, that 7, 12 and that Venus Ketu thing and then the moon card and the 7 ecliptic, that thing. So then, uh, would you suggest this person that uh, there can be struggles in that area? So better you abstain and be a celibate. So would you give some kind of a suggestion like that? Yes. And when I'm looking at a card spread, if I'm just like looking at it intellectually like this, um, I might not always pick up on those recommendations. So whenever I do a card reading, I kind of get into an intuitive space and okay. like whatever needs to come out kind of pulls up out of the spread a little bit for me yeah. um and then i'm able to really confidently make those recommendations but yeah like you could see from here like he's a very strong-willed person um mm -hmm. there's mars and rahu together so i don't know if you've ever dealt with mars rahu combinations but that's in his that's in his uh, an emotional card so there could be some like emotional work that needs to be resolved um definitely he did he ever have children because this is a pluto card that destroys things and this is a jack of hearts which is a card of children okay so maybe he never had children yeah obviously. <laughs> so you could just say um i always my kind of approach with that is you know if a person wants wants to know like should i never be with a you know should i just give up on dating then i'll definitely consider that but i'm not going to tell a person oh you have a chart that shows you'll never get married because there are some people that i think most people even if they're not going to be able to make something happen it's important to their karma that they try oh okay and that's my personal belief system so there's a lot of things in my life that never worked out like I never became a pop star. Like when I was a kid, I thought I was going to be this famous pop star. I really thought when I was seven that I was going to be famous and be a pop star. And I never realized that. But the process of trying to is a process that I 
have never regretted and I loved learning how to make music and me trying to become a pop star allowed me actually to realize that I never wanted to be a pop star. I wanted to know how to produce music. So I think people should appreciate this path because sometimes people have desires that will never be fulfilled Uh because the path that leads to those unfulfilled desires is really what they, the, where their greatest treasures in life are. Okay. And so I know um, it's not an answer you're expecting, but like, that's really my philosophy and I can't answer that. Anyway. Yeah. Even, even, even on an astrological level also, if we see that the person is not destined to get married, I mean, we may not say that, but internally we may know. So on those lines, I was asking not more of the thing. Do you say to the person or not? So, and another thing I wanted to ask here is like, uh, like, of course we know his chart and then there he has, I mean, wonderful positions there. Uh, but uh, here I wanted to ask you, like, he's known as, I mean, the king of astrology as of now, I mean, and so many others also. So how do you see that thing? I mean, any specific thing uh, which shows that he will be like, uh, I mean, at the top of his profession or skill or work, I mean, apart from all these things which you already shared earlier. Well, I like that the Atmakarka is Venus, and that's with K2, which is like the planet of astrology, right? And then there's a relationship to that and the 10th cusp, because the 10th cusp card, which is like his career, his path in life, is um, in the Eight of Diamonds, Sun card, and the Sun card goes into this combination with Venus and K2. So you can see that, right? Oh... Now, the queen of clubs is like the mother of intuition, like literally the mother of intuition card. And this is on his Jupiter card, which is like wisdom, understanding, all of that. So it's really nice for him to have that in this position. Uh And the 10 of clubs is like the full, complete understanding of something. It's like literally the entire path of knowledge. And that's in a very well supported Mars card. Like you don't want necessarily to have Rahu there. Um... So that can cause other challenges, but Mars in the Mars card and the number three is a Mars number is extremely strong. Uh So that's a nice card. So those are things where I would be like, okay, obviously he could be an astrologer. There's like this path of wisdom. There's this path of understanding. Uh Um, Even Jupiter itself is like one of the planets. There's there are yogas in Vedic astrology where, Jupiter in the angle or whatever can make someone an astrologer. Like, I guess if we would looked at his birth chart, we'd be able to see that. And Jupiter here is with the 10th cusp. So that's nice, right? Yes. So Jupiter there's a lot is of, in his 10th house. <laughs> yeah. So it's like really nice to see those kinds of things. As far as him like being the top, like being the best. Um, let me just look. Yeah, one that. of the best or something. I mean. Um, because anyways, well, even using astrology, it is next to impossible if you don't know the person to say that, oh, you are just born now, you will be the king there. So well, I don't think that there will be any method where you can just say, oh my God, you are going to reach there. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's not like easy to see. That's why I'm sitting here taking yes. time to look at it. But here's a really cool thing that I really like. And that is that anytime that you have a really strong face card in the moon card position. Okay you can basically like get people to follow you. You can like, you can amass like, you know, a following of people that will listen to what you say and do as you do. So one of my teachers has this, you know, it's like people are really paying attention. People really want to know what he's up to, all of that. And this King of Spades here, I mean, that's a super, super strong card. Um, Pluto there isn't as helpful, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a bad thing. Um, But, the King of Spades there gives a person the ability to really gain a following. I actually dated someone with a King of Spades there and it was kind of like, no matter what they did, he like no matter what he did, he would get famous for it or like recognition or renowned for it. And he had other really strong, like he had exalted planets in his chart doing things and everything. But Every time I've seen a face card in the moon position, remember moon is the public. Moon Uh, is like how people receive you. It's like the reception that other people have of you. It's the reflection of you out in the world. I mean, that's powerful. So 10 of clubs people 
can be extremely powerful. And I believe Madonna herself is a 10 of clubs. I believe that's the case. Madonna is like one of the top people in her field. And part of that is like incredible willpower, a three in a Mars position, uh, incredible power to captivate people with your moon card, amazing amounts of skill. Like this is one of the most skillful cards in his sun position of like who he is like one of the, it's basically the sun card is like where you can draw all your power from. Okay. Okay. And he's not going to, he's going to get really used to things not working out, the seven of hearts. So when relationships aren't working out, when there's separation, it's like you have more time to focus on you, you know? Okay. Then marry that with amazing ability, amazing intuitive ability, and the ability to work extremely hard, which is a 10 of spades. I mean, that's like a pretty amazing, 10 of, ten of clubs is a pretty amazing um, card spread, you know? Okay. Okay. So there are some card spreads that have more of a potential to really do amazing things. But then okay. you look at the planets to see if, you know, how that's going to feel for them or how that's going to really show itself in the world. Okay. And okay. Um, I wanted to ask, like, we have divisional charts in Vedic astrology. Mm-hmm. I um, mean, any form. So then uh, what, what do you think? I mean, is there something of that sort also here? Yeah. Also, I just wanted to say one more thing. Like if you're familiar with um, planetary combinations in Jaimini astrology, you might be able to pull out certain yogas okay. that you can easily see from the card spread that would like, you know, make someone famous or whatever. So mm. like... Like that, the more that you study astrology, the more that you can look at a card spread and see, oh, there's this combination. Like, there's a Buddha Aditya Yoga here. Yeah. So I definitely see, you know, like I have some yogas memorized, some I don't. So there's the yogas that I have memorized that I'm like, oh, yeah, you have this. So in this area of your life, you're going to be incredibly skillful. Does that make sense? Yes. So Ernst has supplied us with this little button here called Varga. Uh -huh. And if you click okay. on it, you can pull up any of the card spreads for each of the Vargas. Oh, okay. Isn't that crazy? So, so it's like for every divisional chart also it is there. Yes, but what it looks like is I don't think the card spread itself changes. I think that just the planets, or the arrangement of planets changes. He has not taught this screen yet. And I don't know necessarily how to work with it yet, but um, that's where the divisional chart aspect would come into play. Okay. And uh, how, how do you see transits of planets or some, something of that sort? I mean, apart from this yearly progression, which you said, or is it the way that happens? But that will be specific to charts, right? The progression. 